Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, January 31, 2020. And today we're going to take a, uh, a, do a preview of Rob Michael's sale that's coming up in uh, Belgium in a couple of weeks on February 15th and 16th. This is Rob Michael's auctions. He's a very good guy, good, reputable auctioneer. Everybody over there loves this guy. Uh, I've known him off and on. We've communicated for nearly 20 years, and uh, uh, we had placed this auction on the member pages last week, and he got a hold of me and said, could we, could we do a little video to let folks know more about the sale? So that's what we're doing here. Um, I do recommend it highly. Uh, and uh, this is uh, how it's going to appear. This is a, a two-day sale on uh, live auctioneers. It's also an invaluable and you can uh, go look at the lots over there. There's a lot of nice things. This is day one. One of the things that he's doing is that on the higher end lots, the lots that are 20, 30,000 euros, that kind of thing, he is requiring a deposit of some kind uh, against it uh, so that uh, you don't end up, you do, well, as a bidder, you want to recommend welcome this because it means you're not bidding against somebody who doesn't plan on paying his bill. You're bidding only against serious people, and uh, it's a small uh, step in the right direction to uh, stop people from bidding on things and not paying for them. Uh, which is a problem all over the world. The major auction houses adopted this as a standard thing uh, a number of years ago. And then we're going to get started. This is one of the one of the big lead lots he's pretty excited about, and I don't blame him. It's a big pair of Femi Ver Kung Shi jars with their lids, nice figural landscape and interior scenes, lots of activity, lots of action on it, a lot of detail. Here it is. Go around it. It's all there. Uh, the jar appears appear to be in very nice condition. You always want to get a condition report, but just to just to be sure. And these are big. These are 64 centimeters tall. They're 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 about 25 inches uh, tall, 26 inches tall, estimated at 20 to 40 thousand euros, which is not unreasonable because in, as many of you, if you've been following the uh, auctions for years now, you know that a single one of these jars, and we've seen the, this style before. They also did them just blue and white. Um, they typically sell for anywhere from sixteen to twenty-five thousand uh, dollars U.S. Uh, so twenty to forty thousand euros for a pair is pretty reasonable, and uh, those are very nice. Those are really handsome. And then onto these, this pair of late nineteenth, possibly early twentieth century. He he sort of straddled the line there, but this pair of, of Femio Rose with a lot brilliant yellow decoration, and these are also big vases. These all these pieces are quite big, but if you blow these up and take the time to look at them on the site, you'll see he's got really good pictures. The pictures are great. Um, you can see how good the detail is on all this. The Millefiori design, uh, a lot of later Ching stuff when they did the Millefiori decorations, they were sort of blotchy and not very well defined, sort of lower quality. These are really well done. These are beautifully painted, just exceptional all the way around. And these are big pots. Um, they are, how tall, these were 60, 50, 55, um, uh, da, 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 55 centimeters tall, um, so forth, uh, 60, 66 centimeters on their stands. So they're um, getting up around two feet. Uh, most vases in this style are not that big. Uh, you typically see them; they're around 12 inches tall. These are monsters, and they're estimated at 30 to 60 thousand euros. Not a crazy price because of the quality of the work. Always look at the quality. Quality is excellent. And then onto these, this pair of Chin Lung style blue and white. They're 19th century, but exceptional quality. Really, really fine quality, and they are also quite big. Um, there's there's a multiple shots. They have chin lung marks on them, but Rob uh, feels that they're probably 19th century, and I agree with him. But they're estimated at 10 to 20 thousand euros, which is not an enormous price, and uh, they are uh, roughly about uh, 16 inches tall. Uh, a nice size and uh, beautifully done. Beautifully done. And uh, as I I'll keep saying, always get the condition report just to be certain, but. Uh, everything else that's fine and then on to these these are the biggest vases in the sale these are monsters um, these are over 90 so these are over three feet tall they're like 30 uh, 37 or 8 inches tall how big I'm gonna get it right 
92 centimeters tall, so they're like 37 or 8 inches tall, uh, but they're uh, beautifully done. And uh, if you blow them up and pull them in, you'll see how, how good the uh, decoration is on these. I love the way they colored the foo lines on the, on the neck here. This was a, a popular thing to apply to vases in the 19th century in particular, uh, the large and the small foo line. We're going to look at another vase that look, coming up that's equally splendid that has the same sort of patterning but in, in just in celadon with slip decoration. But these are beautifully done, nice ruffled rims on them, and they're very, very big. These are, these are monsters. You've, once you get into vases that are over uh, 24 or 25 inches tall, you're really in a whole other world because they made very few of these. And uh, these are just great. And the estimate is, I think, extremely reasonable. Uh, four to six, four to 8,000 euros. Uh, I would uh, ask for a condition report just to make sure. But um, here's a picture of the bottoms. They look OK to me. Uh, but always check, always check. And uh, Rob's people are great about replying to email, so don't worry about it. And uh, they'll get back to you. And, and they do check carefully. They blacklight everything and whatnot. And uh, then on to this. This is a Kangxi charger. This is a beast of a plate. It has a small old repair on the back, but it's, it's not much. I'll show it to you in a minute. But what's really nice about this is that the decoration is in beautiful condition. Uh, if you look carefully at this, you don't see much wear or anywhere uh, to the enamels. Everything is in good shape. Uh, you don't see any scratches, uh, nothing. Just in nice, nice condition. And this is a very, very big plate. Um, this thing is, uh, well, what was this? It was 40, something, 40 inches? Or, I mean, uh, 20 inches wide? Something like that. Hold on. 55 centimeters. So it was... Uh, Roughly 20 inches in diameter, estimated at 25 to 50,000 euros, but it's a very, very big plate. Um, here's a picture of the back of it, and if you blow it up, you can see that there is a, a old repair right here, where, it's, where a piece has been restuck, as they say. But I wouldn't worry about that. You could, you can get that fixed, okay? And then on to this another charger an armorial charger this time mid 18th century or earlier but superb quality and again notice that the, the enamels are in the decoration is in beautiful condition you don't see a lot of wear on this the gilding in the middle is in, in good 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 shape the colors are still nice bright and strong um all the uh, uh, diaper patterns and all this here, the gilding, it all looks almost untouched. And this is a big piece. Most memorial plates that you run into are under 12 inches, um, but this one is, is, is huge. It's 43 centimeters, or roughly, uh, uh, what is that? That works out to about 18, 19 inches in diameter. Great big one, eight to 12,000 euros. Um, there are other memorial plates on here of lower estimates. I just love this one. It's just so pretty and so big. All right, uh, you know, the, for every big charger that they made for a set, they, they often made, you know, a dozen or a couple of dozen plates. So you don't see the chargers very often. And they often got broken because they were hung on walls quite, quite frequently and they would fall down and that was the end of the plate. Then on to this. This is one of the most unusual export bowls I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of export bowls. I've seen the hunt bowls, the, the hong bowls. Um, I've seen the, uh, the, the guys fighting in the water bowls and all that other stuff. But this is a, a shipwreck. And you can see here there's a demasted square rigger and uh, all this uh, business going on here. It's not heavily decorated, but it's so interestingly decorated. This is quite unusual. Um, it has an old line in it and one thing and another, but very rare type of, if you collect rare export, you want to look at this very carefully and think about it. Uh, because you're not going I don't think you're going to see this pattern again anytime soon. And um, it's an 18th century example and uh, estimated modestly two to four thousand euros, 1600 euro opening bid, but highly unusual. Uh, it's uh, roughly uh, nine inches in diameter or so. So it's not a giant bowl, but, but a very unusual bowl. Really unusual. And then this. This is a contemporary piece of porcelain. It's a Kong, as you all know, but it is huge. This is a very big piece. It's about 20 inches tall, and it was done by a recognized, a very recognized artist in China. The decoration on it is quite excellent, um, I have to say. If we can get it to blow up here. Hold on a second. There. Um, just beautifully done. Let me see if I can get this to blow up a little. No, it won't blow up for me. But at any rate, it's beautifully done. And there's a picture. They've included a picture of the artist sitting with it. 
which is a very cool thing. And these, while it's contemporary, it was done in 2002. This is a, a very, becoming a very heavily collected market. Um, this, the, the contemporary Chinese porcelain, some of the workers in Jing Chen and around the country um, are, are becoming highly recognized, just like the Yi Xing uh, teapot thing that we mentioned in other videos. Uh, the modern ones are high, un unbelievably collected. Sotheby's did an auction of them uh, a while ago, uh, just last year, and they did all did very, very well. This is a heck of a nice Kong, and uh, by a known artist, Zhang Song Mao did the work. It's estimated at five to 10,000 euros, but it's very big. It's about double the size of the typical Kong, or nearly double the size. So you, you want to check that out if you like contemporary porcelain. And then on, to, or if you don't like it, if you've never tr looked into it, you might want to look into it. It's, it's, I think, an undervalued area of the market. And then on to this, the, uh, the three-toed frogs um, with, the, with the boys on it. Uh, these are about six or seven inches tall, Kung Shi period, obviously, in good condition. Uh, check, you know, get the condition reports. He's got, it looks like he's got a stub toe here, but that's about it. But it's unusual to find three of them as a, as a group, okay. And uh, they're estimated at three to 6,000 euros, uh, but that, that is within the realm of reasonableness for these because you're, you're getting three. Um, and and when you, once, you, once you get even a pair, often a pair is worth about three times the price of a single. So if you do the math on it, you're getting three in this case. It's quite a good thing. And then over to these, there are a lot of lots in, the, these, these two, in this two-day auction uh, like this. Lots of very fine 18th century Chinese export porcelain. Uh, and if you're a dealer, you can buy these, you can break them up, you can probably make money with them. All right, uh, the, there's some nice cups and saucers here, there's two nice teapots, uh, all of it is 18th century. And uh, the estimate on the lot is pretty reasonable, 800 to 1200 euros, 650 euro opening bid. Um, I think there's, there's some room in there to make some money if you can buy them right. And then there's this, the Benkwong Thai bowl. Very unusual bowl because it has a monochrome colored main body. Uh, it looks like it's done in a dark brown, and uh, it's a 19th century example too. It's not it's not one of the early 20th ones that they try to sell as uh, 19th century all the time. But this is a nice one. The colors are good. It's got that nice translucent green in it. The interior of it is very pretty, simple, elegant, and pretty, and estimated at one to two thousand euros with an 800 euro opening bid. Not bad. If you like Bangkok ware, that's you go look around. You're not going to find that style uh, very easily. <clears throat> and then on to these. This is a pair, a nice big pair of Femi June with Famille Rose decoration, relief worked. These this raised these raised uh, precious objects with cranes and whatnot. Uh, very unusual in a 19th century porcelain. The style originated in the Kangxi period, and then it was carried forward. Uh, but they they did this kind of work then, and uh, these are just plain pretty, and they are big too. These are about 18 inches tall for the, uh, each and uh, made uh, during the middle latter part of the 19, uh, 19th century. They're estimated at 12 to 1800 euros, which seems very reasonably, reasonable to me. I would think one of these would bring 12 to 1800 euros in that size. Remember, size really matters in vases. Once you, once you, once you start creeping up in sizes, um, uh, you know, over 15 inches, it's a different price range. Over 20 inches, it goes up again, and then over 30, uh, the gloves really come off. But, but these are nice big ones. They'd be handsome on a mantle if you like yellow. And then on to this, the Republic period, late Qing or Republic period, uh, uh, gift boxed uh, uh, bladder form uh, Lung Yao vase, uh, very, pr very pretty vase. Uh, for a late Qing piece, really well done, and the box is spectacularly well done. And if if you're in, interested in it, the the the, the packaging, uh, the art of packaging in China is really an art. Uh, the Imperial uh, Palace even had an atelier atelier that all they did was make packaging for things, for gifts to monks, gifts to monasteries, gifts to visiting dignitaries. The package was considered almost as important as the contents. And uh, this was a lovely piece done in that tradition with an inscribed exterior. And uh, the estimate is pretty reasonable, 1,500 to 2,500 euros. Um, I would think you'd pay close to that for the box. And then you get the vase that came in it. It's about eight inches tall. The box is around 12 inches tall, as I recall. So it's a nice thing. It's a nice, nice object. And then over in the Japanese area, you have this, this big Meiji period relief worked uh, koi fish done in pigments. And pigments on these are quite unusual. You've seen lots of them with silver inlay and uh, you know that kind of thing. Um, 
or even some gilding, but this is relief worked and then painted. And I think the painting is very effective on it. It has sort of, they would do these, this painting in sort of a rusticated way. It's, that's not really where you're seeing. They just did them sort of roughly and quickly to, to, to throw some color in to give it more, more of the relief, uh, some definition. And this is a big one. It's 54 centimeters tall or um, uh, around 20 inches in height. It's a big pot. Three to six thousand euros is the estimate. Twenty-four hundred euros is the opening bid. Um, if you could buy this for for you know under four thousand euros, you got a heck of a nice Japanese bronze for that price. It's very good. And then onto this, another great big vase. This is an interesting interesting piece. It's a nineteenth century slip decorated uh, celadon. And uh, what's really nice about this is one is that the, the foo lions are beautifully done. Like we saw in that other 19th century one, they did incredible detail on some of these when they applied these foo lions. And they did it again on this one. And it has that you know very classical ruffled rim and all that. But what's really worked out on this was the quality of the slip decoration. When they applied this kind of slip decoration, it was done, uh, one of the intents was to give sort of a three-dimensional effect as though the, the, the flowers and the butterflies and the, and the vines, the bamboo trees, are floating just slightly above the surface. And in this piece, you can see it. You can see how it's shadowed, the glaze shadowed under. So it really does look like they're floating. And that was one of the visual effects that they were trying to achieve. And you can see it down here, especially where it gets a little darker. You see all that beautiful work. And the, it goes throughout the entire piece. It's a heck of a vase. And it's a great big one, too. This one is almost three feet tall. It's 87 centimeters. So it's uh, roughly 34 inches tall or so. Uh, but very unusual, and I think the estimate is 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 extremely reasonable, um, five to ten thousand euros, uh, with a four four thousand euro opening uh, bid on it. I think that's uh, more than fair. Uh, that is one heck of a pretty vase, really is, and and the size is big. You put a stand on it, you're up to about thirty eight, thirty nine inches. And then over here, there's a uh, a very nice uh, 15th century dated Tibetan uh, uh, tonka with the uh, Shakyama Buddha on it. Um, here it is, uh, dated 1454, uh, nicely done, beautiful color, 20 to 40,000 euros, which isn't a crazy price for one of these. We've seen 18th century ones, not as good, bringing bringing that range. Uh, if you can, if you're if you're a Tonka collector, you're into Buddha paintings. Uh, this is a really really nice one, really beautiful. And then over here, this is maybe one of the niftiest Wan Lee pots I've seen in a long time. First thing is that's most noticeable is that. Um, uh, uh, the, the decoration is very sharp, crisp. That is that beautiful uh, 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 bluish violet tone to it that was uh, became so popular in the Jai Jing period just before the Wan Li. Uh, but this thing is dated and signed with a Wan Li mark, which is very unusual. Dated Wan Li pieces don't come along very often at all. And this is a beautiful one. The quality of the work is exceptional, uh, just exceptional all the way around. And if you look at it carefully, you can see what I mean. Just beautifully done. And uh, this is the estimate on it is well within the range of 30 to 60,000 euros. It's a lot of money, but not a lot of money for one of these. There was one that came up not long ago uh, that had a crack in it and it just had the basic one Lee mark and it uh, went for about 65,000. All right, here's the, here's the mark on the base uh, with the date on it. Uh, very unusual. Here's a view from the top down. Uh, really exceptional. This is, you know, almost like the kind of work you see on Kung Shi pieces or earlier Ming pieces. It's Wan Li. Makes it interesting. Thirty to sixty thousand uh, if you're a Ming buyer, and it's dated 1587. Um, there's no online bidding for this. You have to make a deposit. But boy, if you collect late Ming stuff or mid Ming stuff, you want to look at this. This is nice. And then on to the next day is uh, here. There's a lot of bronzes in this sale. Also carved coral and there's some jades. I don't have time to get to it all because it's 800 lots. But uh, there's this bronze. It measures just a hair under 12 inches tall. It's beautifully done. The patina is undisturbed. Uh, there's lots of good images of it, so you can really get a sense of it. Is the back. The back is nicely detailed. Sometimes they skip the details on the backs of these, thinking nobody's ever going to look at them. Here's the underside, all grungy and rough the way it should be, a view from the top. And uh, the estimate on it's pretty reasonable, one to 2,000 euros. Not everything in this sale is you know tens of thousands of euros. They have lots of lots under 2,000 euros. There's lots of good lots in here for that price. 
and uh, see how that does. And then mosey on over to this. There's another painting. This is a uh, 16th or early 18th, uh, 17th or early 18th century painting. Uh, beautifully done, classical sort of thing. Uh, it's got the signature of uh, 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 Yuan Bian Zhang. Zhang is the last name. Uh, and his dates are 1525 to 1590. Uh, beautiful painting. It is a very, very old painting. It's definitely from the period. I, don't, I cannot say definitively if it's by the artist, uh, but it's a really wonderful classical landscape scene. Uh, and uh, six to 12,000 euros, which is well within the range. And it looks like it's been nicely remounted. A lot of scrolls, if you see scrolls, expect them to be remounted, especially old ones, uh, because the mounts gave way, they got ripped, they got moved around a lot, turmoil, one thing and another, and they saved the painting and they just put it on a new backing. That's all that is. All right, and then over here, there's a lot, there's quite a few good lots of snuff bottles, four and five, six of them at a time. <clears throat> this is a nice one, snowflake bottles with red overlay. It's all, they're all carved, beautifully done. I like the one on the end here with the chimera on it, coiling around. Um, and the estimate is fairly reasonable, four to 800 euros. And if you, if you follow snuff bottles, you know that individually these snuff bottles typically sell for, you know, two to $300 a piece pretty comfortably um, on, on eBay or Katawiki or any place else. And uh, here the opening bid is 300 euros, so you have a shot at getting a really good buy there. And remember, small things like this, the shipping is peanuts. Um, and on the shipping issue, if you talk to Rob, he'll, they'll, they'll help you with that, all right? Um, they're, they're good about shipping and getting things out. All right, now over here, uh, the, the second day you have this. This is a really unusual Ming Dynasty gilt bronze cup with the Ling Bai uh, fungi uh, handle on it and this nice relief work in cartouches with uh, butterflies and these crosshatch upper edges and all that. You don't see these cups very often uh, because they got broken, the handles got knocked off, they got melted down and used again for something else. But this one is in good shape and has a remarkable amount of gilding on it for its age. Really does, because gilding peels off a of bronze pretty easily. And the interior looks to be in nice condition. Here's a picture of the bottom, nice, nice thickly done bottom. Um, um, no damage that I can really see anywhere, nothing to worry about. And the estimate's fair, one, um, a one to 2,000 euros. Um, and it is, uh, how big is it? It's about seven centimeters tall, so it's about three inches, two or three inches tall. Nice thing, nice thing, very unusual. And then on the lacquer side, there's this, this pair of, there's several lots of uh, good early lacquer with um, a mother of pearl inlay. This is a particularly colorful set with lobed, lobed trays and lobed cups, Kung Shi period, uh, but very, very pretty. I love, I love how this looks. Love the decoration, the shading, the way it glows. Um, it's, it's really quite fabulous. And uh, they're estimated at one to 2,000 euros, 800 euro opening bid, again, very reasonable. I mean, you know, if you if you watch things on eBay, you see the single cups go for four to six hundred dollars all the time. So one to two thousand for a matching set with cups and under trays, I think, is a good deal, and they appear to be in good shape. Again, get a condition report. Okay, and then over here is the painting. This is a a, a nice early uh, painting uh, with a, with a full inscription at the top, and uh, here you have the uh, figures and landscape uh, scenes. Nice detail, beautifully detailed on a soft green ground. Uh, lots of you know precious objects on the table, scholars' objects and books and whatnot. And uh, let's see here, who is this? This is by signed um, Hua Yan. Uh, his dates are 1682 to 1756. So it was, if by him it was done in the 18th century. Um, estimated 12 to 18 thousand euros. You want to check his history and look him up, see how he does. But that's a nice one. Has a nine thousand dollar opening bid, or nine thousand euro opening bid, I should say. All right, and then on to these. These are also uh, among the vases and porcelains of the, of the eight hundred lots or so. This is one of the pairs that are absolute corkers. They're Chinlung period, iron red and gilt decorated phoenix jars. And if you come over here and look at these, and you look at the work, uh, always look at the artwork. The artwork on these is exceptional. The detail, the, the tiniest details are all there. And look at the condition of the enamels. There's no wear. Uh, down at the bottom, there's some gilding, these little high points of gilding, and they're all intact. And what that tells you is that whoever's been uh, you know, taking care of these for years and years and years, nobody ever you know, pulled out the scuff pad and some ammonia and scrubbed them down. You can see the gilding all up in here where the light's reflecting is all intact. They seem to be pretty much pristine. 
<clears throat> from what I can tell. I don't see anything wrong with them. And these are big. These are very big jars. They are, uh, where's the, um, 81 centimeters. So they're roughly uh, 30, what are they, about 32, 33 inches tall, estimated at 30 to 60,000 euros with a 24,000 euro opening bid. Uh, I, I think that's really reasonable. Um, if one of these brought 20,000 euros, I wouldn't be in the slightest surprised. It, it, they are big, very, very big and pretty. All right, you do, you know, again, you don't see vases in this, in this size uh, very often, nearing, near, getting up close to three feet. Um, beautiful quality, just beautiful. All right, and then on to these, a pair of Kung Shi jars. And what, the reason I'm showing these is they have, there's some breaks around the top here, but what's really interesting about these is that it has uh, faience, uh, sort of Delft lid replacements on them that are old. These are, look like 18th century lids to me. So at some some point, these jars were, uh, you know, over here. Uh, they may have may not had lids, but somebody had a set of lids made for them, and they did these nifty pottery appliques with these look like cocker spaniels on top. I think that's great. And uh, their, their estimates very reasonable, four to six, four to eight thousand euros. I think one of them has some damage on the back around the upper part of the collar or the neck. But these are, are quite large. These are also just a hair under 50 centimeters tall or uh, about 18 inches in height, um, which, which makes them or, or, or no more, or about 22 inches in height. Makes them very interesting. All right. And uh, if, you, if you like Kung Shi, you like those. And then over here, another Meiji jar, another big one, too. And this is a Meiji period relief work with, with a couple of children, very charmingly placed with, with vines coming down over the shoulder. The bronze has nice patina on it, as you can see. Uh, the details, of, like all Meiji work, are great. She has a, a bamboo stick with a, a, a iron red, a red pigmented painted crab crawling up it. You see crabs uh, often in Chinese bronzes. And here's another one down here. So they're at the shore. Yeah, they're at the shore. Here are the waves, and they're on the rocks. They're gathering crabs. What fun. And uh, this is a very nice bronze, too, just like the other one. Um, and it is also big, 61 centimeters. This thing is 25 inches tall, basically, with a three to 6,000 pound, uh, three to 6,000 euro estimate. Uh, that seems awfully reasonable. 2,400 euros is the opening bid. Um, this is a great big bronze. Um, the Japanese were really great at making big bronzes. And if you see them out of context to a background, you think they're small. And uh, no, they're not. They're quite large. Uh, very interesting. And then over here is another big pair of bronzes. These, these are um, a pair of uh, uh, koi fish that have been uh, Meiji period patinated koi um, being, um, uh, being hung on uh, bamboo. When they catch them, they would, they would run bamboo through them and use them to carry the fish. And uh, here they are. And these are nice. And these are also big, 46 centimeters. So these are also about, about what, 20 inches long, quite large. Okay, 18, 20 inches long, and an estimate, uh, a really, really reasonable estimate, 1,500 to 2,500 euros. But uh, for something this big, most, most of the bronzes done by the, in the Meiji period of this sort of thing were done as okimono. <clears throat> they tend to be very small, you know, five to seven inches. These are big. These are whoppers. All right. And then over here, a pair of Japanese Arita AOC, uh, VOC plates. The Dutch East India Company. These are the monograms of the Dutch East India Company. Um, I can't remember the last time I saw a pair of them. And uh, they're nicely done. There's good shading on these. These are late 17th century dishes or so. Um, but nice quality. Here's the backs of them. Okay, you see the spur marks, which you expect to see on these. And uh, they're estimated at three to 6,000 euros or 2,400 euros to get them started. Uh, quite unusual. And uh, you don't see them very often. The, the, the Peabody Museum here in Massachusetts has, has some VOC material that's interesting, too. But, but getting a, the chance to get a pair, I think, is pretty, pretty uh, seductive. And I don't think the estimate's crazy, because these are made around 1680, 1690. And then over here, the Kakiemon. There's other Japanese porcelain. This is just some of the, some jars. There's all kinds of stuff. But you want to check it out. But this is a very pretty kak classical 17th century Kakiemon uh, jar uh, with nice enamels, that nice milky white, milk white ground, not too glossy. And the glaze, that was one of the things about Kakiemon. It looked like just sort of like a pool of milk on the, on the porcelain. And uh, also, as he says, 17th century here as well. One to two thousand dollar estimate. These, this jar is about seven inches tall, and uh, again, always get a condition report. 
But it's a very good auction, whether you're a dealer or a collector. And they ha they have a little something in every price range. I, I, it's a very impressive sale. And I, I know he's worked, uh, somebody told me he's been killing himself to put this sale together. So good for him. He did a good job. And the pictures are all excellent. And um, we'll include down below in the uh, link below this video, um, um, a, a link to the uh, uh, you know the email address to ask questions and uh, to their website and so forth so you can uh, get in touch and uh, we'll have something on the uh, we ha already have it on the member pages and we'll add something else to the rest of the site form too we'll use this video in the newsletter today all right that's it uh, check it out and uh, we've added a lot of stuff other things there's another big sale coming up in, in um, uh, Austria uh, with some very nice looking things as well in a few weeks and that's now on there too so uh, check them out and uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, have a wonderful week and uh, if you have any questions just get a hold of Rob and his people and ask them all right bye bye <laughs>